a proportion stop. This portion of the OJ Today is brought to you by Instat, the official analytics supplier to the OJHL. This is the OJ Today. What's up, everyone? I am Alex Bastiavansky. Great to see you again. Welcome to our very first program of the year. And uh, we're going to be bringing you all the best from the Ontario Junior Hockey League all the way through to the month of May. And sticking with tradition on today's show, since it is our first show of the year we are going to have a look back at what went down last season and uh, what you can expect for this year the ojhl skates into the 2022-23 season on the heels of last year's campaign that will go down as one of the greatest in league history two new powers emerged in the milton menace and the Collingwood Blues. The Halliburton Huskies settled into their new home in Minden to great fanfare. But in the end, it was the Pickering Panthers that triumphed as Buckland Cup champions. Their first championship since 1986. The Cats ultimately made it all the way to the national final in Estevan, Saskatchewan. We built for that last year. Uh, you know, we had a tough go to get there, but, it, you know, it's more satisfying when you uh, can play a lot of great quality teams and then end up at the Nationals in the finals. The Panthers won the Buckland Cup over a powerful junior Canadian squad. They were the OJHL's regular season champions in an epic seven-game series that won't be soon forgotten. The team just found a way to respond. And from there on, it was just a great series right to the end. I, I think we scored with about 37 seconds left to, to take it. Trying to find Perry. Tomlinson with the drive to the net. They score. The Pickering Panthers have scored with 37.7 seconds left to go in regulation. A well-coached team there in JRC, and uh, they're built to uh, hopefully follow last season up this season and uh, maybe take one more for the OJ for us. Phenomenal game seven to be a part of. Uh, unfortunately, didn't go our way at the end there. Um, but you know, we've got uh, 10 or 11 guys back that, that went through that uh, experience. And we're going to uh, reap, reap the rewards of that this year, hopefully. There were standout individual performers as well. North York's George Figueres won the league's top defenseman award and was taken in the third round of the NHL draft by Dallas. Not bad for a rookie. And Trenton's Dalton Bancroft was named the OJ's MVP. They got their set up. Bancroft, shot, scores! He had a great season last season. Uh, MVP, uh, tied for most points with uh, Brad Summers, but he was one of the reasons why Trenton was second in their division. He kept them afloat all year. He was always part of the most goals and most points for the whole season. We talked about him three times when he was on the show last year. And I'm not surprised we're talking about him again. This season kicked off back in early September. To much fanfare, the league has restructured the conferences. Uh, the fact that we're going to have two conferences with the top eight from each uh, making the playoffs uh, makes it simple. It makes it interesting. Uh, we're back to crossover games again, so you get a chance to see teams in the other conference. Uh, there, there are so many pluses for the year. It's just. Uh, it's, it's uh, shaping up to be a great year. The CHCH Game of the Week returns this season. The first game will be broadcast at 3 p.m. on November 12th with Oakville taking on Pickering. Alan Corkum will once again be a host on the broadcast. Yeah, I was, I was very thrilled and honored to get the call to be a part of the OJHL Game of the Week on CHCH this past season. And it was great to work with Jack Moore. Just a great thing for the league, and we're the only league in Canada that has a national TV deal. While the season is still young, the Collingwood Blues, Milton Menace, and Junior Canadians 
have cemented their place as legitimate contenders. And Ron Valentine feels the hot start by Tyler Fukakusa is no fluke. He has started off at almost a three point per game clip and nobody scored 100 points in, in the last few years in the OJHL. If you're a betting man, I would put some money on Tyler Fukakusa the way he started and the Canadians look so strong, uh, he's almost a lock at this very early point. And he got rewarded for his great play. Players of the Month for September brought to you by Warrior, the official hard goods supplier to the OGHL. And Tyler Fukakusa is the Player of the Month in the Southeast Conference. 23 points, 9 goals, 14 assists in September for Tyler. In the Northwest, Mark McIntosh, uh, who's leading that dynamite Collingwood Blues squad 16 points in September 10 goals six assists to take the nod for the Northwest and your goaltender of the month newcomer James Norton for the junior Canadians and look at the month he had 6 0 and 0 and check out those goals against average and save percentage numbers great start for James congratulations guys on your player of the month honors This portion of the OJ Today is brought to you by Nutrifarms, the title sponsor of the OJHL's championship series. Welcome back to the OJ Today, everyone. You know, Toronto Junior Canadians head coach Vince Bellissimo has coached some phenomenal high-end players over the years. So when he says that a certain player on his team just may be the best 20-year-old that the league has ever seen, Oh, you pay attention. Here's more on that player that's just lighting up the OJ so far this season, Tyler Fukakusa. Face off, won by Fukakusa. Played back, Loretto from behind the net and up ahead. F. Domofsky with a saucer feed. Wild coming in. Fukakusa, he scores! Engine, engine, number nine, all aboard the Fukakusa line! In the OJHL this season, one player has stood head and shoulders above the rest. They're running a 1 3 1, looking for the man in the high slot. Fukakusa shot, and he rips it wide. Well, you can see why he's the leading goal scorer in the OJHL, boy. Uh, watch for him, he's playing pro hockey in about another three or four years. Tyler Fukakusa has been a dominant force. The 20-year-old Mississauga resident is the league's leading scorer and a big reason as to why the Toronto Junior Canadians have been one of the OJ's top teams so far this season. Well, he just keeps getting better. I mean, his, uh, his buy-in day-to-day, his attention to detail, Detail, his willingness to uh, improve and his drive is what makes him what he is. Uh, he's very well-rounded, he skates very well, competes extremely hard, he's got a very good stick. He shoots the puck well and he sees the ice like, uh, like a pro. So uh, you combine that with his work ethic, uh, his attention to detail, his leadership skills. Um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, he's the best one-year-old this league's seen in a long time. I think I'm a skilled, fast, two-way player. Um, I like to think I can uh, shoot the puck more this year. It's been uh, something I've, I've uh, tried to work on. Um, I think I can think the game really well and I think I um, make the players around me better. Fukakuza worked hard in the offseason to strengthen his game in all areas. I think the biggest thing for me is um, focusing on my strength. Um, getting bigger, stronger. Um, obviously, I'm going to be playing at the NCAA level next year, so um, I think that's uh, that's my main focus to be able to um, make the jump there. And then, obviously, um, you're working on your skating. Uh, my shot, obviously, I wasn't happy with how many goals I scored last year, and think I could produce more in that area. They talk about being a perfectionist. He makes it sound as if he had trouble putting the puck in the net last year. But Fukakusa racked up 21 goals in the regular season and in the playoffs had a mind-boggling 33 points in just 13 games. 
But head coach Vince Bellissimo is just as impressed with his leadership abilities, and he named him captain this season. For us, it was a super easy choice. We made that decision early in the offseason. Um, and he wears a lot of different hats for us right now, which, as he should, uh, he's gotten more vocal this year. He's, uh, he's uh, taking more accountability from a team perspective. Um, you know, he's, our, he, he's a catalyst for our team offensively and defensively, plays in all situations. Um, so, yeah, it, bringing along younger players, like I said, he's wearing a lot of different hats for us this year, and it's going to be really, really good for his development going into Division One. It's just a really big honor, and um, uh, being the captain of uh, such a special group and um, a group of talented, talented players, uh, Tsunami. This will be Tyler's final season of junior hockey. Next fall, he'll take his talents to RIT University, having inked a scholarship with the Tigers. He's pumped to head south of the border with his current line mate, Matthew Wild. I'm really looking forward to that and, and for me to be able to go in and um, have that full experience with my uh, with my line mate Matthew Wild, my good friend. So um, that'll be good. And uh, the reason I chose RIT, I mean, it's it's such a it's such a great uh, school, and, and it's really established itself as um, a good school in the NCAA. However, before heading to RIT, Fukakuza has some unfinished business after the JRCs made it all the way to Game 7 of the Buckland Cup Final last season, only to lose in the last minute of play to Pickering. They're determined to take the next step this time. Yeah, it just leaves a sour taste in your mouth for uh, coming into this year. Um, it just makes you want to want to get to that position uh, just one more time to be able to get that final win. and. Um, Throughout the year, we're going to be doing everything it takes to get to, to get that much better to get that final one. Tyler Fukakusa, engine, engine number nine. This portion of the OJ today is brought to you by Hockey TV, the official webcaster of the Ontario Junior Hockey League. On every show this season, we'll be taking a look at a few different clubs that are lighting it up in our Who's Hot segment. And three teams really shot out of the gate this season. Collingwood, Milton, and the Junior Canadians, all of which are ranked in the CJHL's top 10. First, let's take a look at Collingwood. The Blues, of course, made the playoffs last season and are looking to go a heck of a lot further this year. A lot of the players have, have really gelled. Uh, you know, I don't want to say quicker than expected, but quickly. Uh, and, and we are, you know, we're deep up front. Uh, we're deep on the back end. Uh, we're, we're deep in net. The Blues are backstopped by one of the OJHL's top keepers in Noah Pack, who's committed to Yale University for next fall. And the Blues have had no trouble scoring goals this season, led by the dynamic duo of Mark McIntosh and Cam Garvey. Pack and show how it's done with the body check. The puck squeaks, and we got a break by McIntosh! Makes no mistake! Goal number 10! You know, Mark McIntosh is a kid that we signed a few years ago out of minor hockey. You know, he's really gotten off to a, a hot start, might be an understatement, in the sense that the amount of goals he scored in the, in the first month. Um, Cam Garvey, unfortunately, had a great start the last year and then got injured in, uh, as a 20-year-old and as our captain. Um, you know, he, he put a lot of time in the offseason to prepare. It looks like the Blues will be a force to be reckoned with this season and will duke it out at the top of the Northwest Conference with the Milton Menace. Now the Menace, of course, made the conference final last season and have been a tremendous success story in the town of Milton. Owner Jason Trifon couldn't be happier about the way things have gone so far this year. 
coming out of the team that we had built last year, we lost seven of our top nine forwards. We lost a number of D. We lost our starting goalie as well. Um, so we were staring down a little bit of a rebuild this year, maybe even perhaps a lot of bit of a rebuild. Um, and, you know, we're very fortunate that with the structure of the team um, that Dan has put together, both from a composition perspective of the hockey players that we've signed, but more importantly, the way that they're learning so quickly, um, his style of hockey and, and systems, which we have a lot of, um, the, the proof is in the pudding. And the menace have been paced offensively by Aiden Hughes, who's among the top scorers in the OJHL this season. Aiden Hughes is, is something. Uh, you talk about a character kid. This is a player that's D1 bound um, or, or next level bound and, and is definitely someone to take notice of for sure. He is, he personifies a, a hard nosed hockey player that's emotionally vested for his teammates, um, his club, and, and more, and, and himself as well. Also back with a vengeance this season are the Toronto Junior Canadians who lead the Southeast Conference. Head coach Vince Bellissimo likes the mix of older and younger players that make up the roster. We're playing well. We, uh, um, you know, we had a real good training camp, three weeks. Uh, with a real good preseason going seven and one. So our older guys have done a great job in uh, kind of grooming the young guys, showing them how it's done, leading by example every day. And the young kids, we've got a, we've got a lot of young kids on the roster this year. Right? Half, the, half the roster is extremely young. And those kids have done a great job in learning uh, what we're all about. And of course, the JRCs are led by the league's most potent duo, the OJ's leading scorer, Tyler Fukukusa, and line mate Matthew Wild, both bound for RIT University next fall. But new to the team is goalie James Norton, who just picked up the Warrior Goalie of the Month Award for September. Yeah, James has been great. Uh, he's a big guy and he's quick. So that's a pretty lethal combo uh, uh, when he's covering that much net and he's able to move quickly and efficiently. If he continues uh, at this pace, uh, our team's going to be very well off and he's going to be playing at a very good Division One program. Okay, some OJHL news for you now, brought to you by Jostens, the official ring and awards provider to the OJHL. Big event coming up in Milton on November 4th. It's Forces Appreciation Night. All funds raised will be donated to the Royal Canadian Legion. Uh, Friday, November 4th at the Milton Memorial Arena. Head to MiltonMenace.com for more information. OJ commitments to tell you about Riley Patterson is having a great rookie year. He has committed to Michigan State for the fall of 2024. And you will see that play right there again in the plays of the month. I guarantee it. His teammate, Isa Parekh, has committed to Bemidji State for the fall of 2023. And finally, uh, McKay Hayes of the Markham Royals has committed to Robert Morris for the fall of 2023. Congrats, guys, on your commitments. This portion of the OJ Today is brought to you by Troy Hockey, the official jersey of the Ontario Junior Hockey League. Welcome back to the OJ Today. So on every show this year, we're going to once again be doing a feature story on an OJHL alumnus who's gone on to play at the next level. Well, this week, it's Justin Paul, who played four years in the league and had a knack for scoring big goals at just the right time. It's there for McShannon, McShannon, over to Justin Paul, wait, shoot, and he scores! Just in time, Justin Paul! Just in time was Georgetown Raiders broadcaster Alan Corkum's nickname for Justin Paul during his OJHL playing career. Over four years, the forward had a knack for coming through in the clutch. Paul started his time in the OJ with the Milton Ice Ox before moving on to the Raiders and finally the Wellington Dukes. For Paul, the OJHL proved to be an invaluable learning experience. Yeah, I came into the OJHL uh, early on, right out of uh, Minor Midget, and it gave me great opportunity. 
Uh, I knew the OJHL was going to give me a place to learn and grow. That was the main part for me, ma making it to the next level. Um, the OJHL gave me an opportunity to learn from great coaches, uh, and that's what I had throughout my entire career. I had Coach uh, Walters, McCrory, and Smith, and uh, I learned a lot from them that prepared me for the next level. Yeah, Justin Paul, I remember him very well playing for the Georgian Raiders a few years back. Very exciting score. He really complimented the uh, top six forward pairing for Greg Walters and the Raiders. He was a coach at the time, and Paul was a prolific scorer with the Raiders as well. He could score a very timely goal, and I'm not surprised to see his success move on to St. Lawrence in the NCAA route. Justin Paul's favorite experience in the OJHL came during the 2017-18 season in a playoff game that went to overtime. Personally, scoring the Game 7 winner against the North York Rangers. Here comes Jason Smith coming in the net. Makes a custom move. He shoots. There's a ring and they score! Justin Paul scores and sends the Raiders to the Southwest Conference Final! Just in time! Justin Paul! Uh, and just that whole series as a whole. Uh, North York was a phenomenal team that year. Uh, and like I said, winning a Game 7 against such a talented team, a team we were down to in that series, um, our locker room came together. It was just in time, Justin Paul with the big goal, and the Rangers had the Raiders on the ropes. They were up 3-1 in the series. They were up 3 nothing in Game 7, but then the Raiders fought back to tie it, and then Paul with the dagger in overtime. Paul would finish up his OJHL playing days with the Wellington Dukes for his OJHL career. He notched 163 points in 208 games. That earned him a scholarship to St. Lawrence University in Canton, New York. He's now starring in his third season for the Saints. Yeah, St. Lawrence has been phenomenal. Uh, I couldn't be happier, honestly. Uh, when you're looking at where you want to go to school, St. Lawrence has just done everything for me to be a better at hockey player. I uh, want to reach the next level and they're aware of that, but also win now and, and grow as a hockey player while I'm here. They've given me all those opportunities and more, so I couldn't be more grateful to be at St. Lawrence. As for OGHLers looking to take the next step in their hockey careers, Paul offers this bit of advice. Put in the work and enjoy your time there and let, let them come to you and find you, and they will. If you put in the right, right effort and you do the right things while you're there, the OJ's opportunity will bring you to where you want to go if you do if you do what you need to do. Hey, that with him, Paul. Don't you Justin Paul? Wait, shoot! He scores! Just in time, Justin Paul. Okay, here's a look at the plays of the month from the first month and a half of the season. Brought to you by Monkey Sports, the retailer of choice of the OJHL. In front, Shot Pickering, nice little inside and move, scores! As Howe takes a spill behind the net, Morello is shot, scores! Answers Aurora to clear, they can't, Kake holds it in, Kake with it, takes a shot, he scores! The captain showing how it's done with the body check, the puck squeaks through, we got a break by McIntosh! Makes no mistake, ball number 10! Fukakusa back in with some space, drags and he scores! Tyler Fukakusa! Minute 20 to go, Sanojevic tries a wrap and a rebound, shoots, oh, what a save by Kingo! Back and forth, here goes Eek, long pass, goes to Garvey, and Fred scores! Wow! Set it up, with 44 to go. Good gosh, shot score! What a feed! And Michael DeSanto gets his fourth of the year! And that is going to wrap up our very first show of the year. But uh, just a reminder, everyone, all throughout the season, to stay up to date on everything that's going on in the OJHL. Be sure to check out the league's official social media outlets. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.